Manchester City 5, Newcastle 0. City are back at the top of the league. Three points clear. It's a wonderful performance. And Pep Guardiola's Manchester City are absolutely brilliant. I am absolutely delighted about that. Um, honestly, today, City needed to answer some questions. They needed to show the rest of the world just how good they were and that they weren't going to slip up after that Real Madrid performance. And guess what happened? Man City stepped up and were absolutely immense. Of course they were. Like one football is. Please do do me a massive favour and download one football it's the best app on the market bar absolutely none no one gets you closer to football every team every player every goal all on one football you can click the link in the description or scan that qr code next to my face help support the channel a little bit too and you get all your stats and basically, you can go through all the quality of Manchester City. You can go through all the players, look at how many goals and assists Bone has got, all that kind of stuff. Please do hit the subscribe button. Please do download One Football. Please do support the channel. You will not regret it. I promise you. It's a wonderful app. Like Manchester City are great, so is One Football. And this was a wonderful, wonderful day. Honestly, we really did need that. Let's get to 61K, says Dan. Indeed, please do hit the subscribe button as well. Thank you as well to my latest member, City Matt. Um, Matt, you're an absolute legend, mate. I try and get you on the wall of fame right now I'll do that as I'm chatting away to you guys but um guys we needed this didn't we we really did need this this was absolutely essential that City found their form today uh we we absolutely crave this performance like a few people I was um, a little bit anxious uh a little bit anxious about how this was going to go today. Um, I have no idea if we were going to be able to pull it out of the bag or whatever, but we did find a way to do it. Matt, thank you so much. City Matt, uh, you're a legend, mate. Um, I'll update it later. I haven't got the file on this computer that I'm on, but I'll update that bit later on and it'll be on there tomorrow, mate. Thank you so, so much, you legend. Um, but yeah, this performance was a masterclass, basically. All the world was expecting City to slip up after this, and genuinely, they were. There were people here expecting City to let their guard slip a tiny little bit. But this City side do not know when things are supposed to go wrong. And that is why I love this Manchester City side, genuinely. They are brilliant, they are fantastic, uh, and they absolutely... They just basically get themselves going again when they need to. How good were some of these players today on the pitch, by the way? I do think the opening 10 minutes was a little bit too cagey, potentially. Um, I was there today, by the way, and I did take my camera with me. There is a vlog coming. I'm going to start editing it tonight. Maybe it'll be out tomorrow morning, uh, which was good fun to do. Uh, but the atmosphere was buzzing in the stadium, and I think the fans uh, knew the players needed it today, and they did get behind the team. Uh, and it was wonderful. Uh, Super chat from Dylan Black saying, do you think it'll be further at the back against Wolves? It looks like Diaz, Stones, and Ake will miss it. Um, yes, is the honest answer. And we'll get on to the injuries in a bit, Dylan. But yeah, I think that's most likely. I thought we saw Ferner today at the back for a reason. Hopefully Ake will be available, but it's going to be Ferner. Maybe we might even see Rodri at the back at some point, because, you know, maybe in Ferner and Field, we've got to do something like that, Dylan. It isn't ideal, mate, but that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, the injuries were the, obviously the, the, the negative side of this, but ultimately City were very, very good. I mean, what this game means now is huge. I mean, I'll get the Premier League table up. I'll go over to the Premier League table because it's absolutely worth paying attention to. I mean, look at that. City are three points clear with a goal difference of plus four compared to Liverpool. That is huge. There are three games left in the Premier League. And Liverpool right now will be feeling deflated. And this is why I was so positive last night because you need that. I mean, look at that table. This is a Manchester City side that apparently <laughs> were bottlers, allegedly. This is the greatest Liverpool side of all time that are going to win the quadruple, allegedly. They might still do it, I don't know. But in Liverpool, that great. How good are this Manchester City side to keep this all-timer, phenomenal Liverpool side at bay? You've got to consider these questions, man. You've got to consider these questions. And by the way, just to keep the record clear, we are now... 28 points clear of Man United. City could just lose somehow nine games in a row. United would have to win 10 to somehow find that way. And it's not impossible, of course. It's a ridiculous buffer. Uh, the Bertie buffer is absolutely huge, and I love it. But that Premier League table, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, and it's fantastic. And it's it's deserved as well. Like, it's deserved. You don't realise sometimes, and I don't mean you as a person individually, so maybe you do, but I mean as an individual, people don't tend to realise how hard it is to pick yourself up and and go again after a night like the other night because it leaves you feeling a bit shell shocked because you spend and Rodri said this after the game you spend months and months and months working towards that one moment and then it's gone like like that like a snap of Thanos's fingers just like that everything is gone in a blink of an eye and that kind of stuff absolutely it hits your confidence because you've been working towards it for ages and it feels just so emotionally tiring so then to come out and do what Man City did today 
That takes balls, man. It takes balls. Genuinely does. It takes an awful lot of um, self belief. It helps. It takes conviction. It takes coward. It takes uh, not cowardice. It takes cowards get it wrong. It takes bravery. The opposite of cowardice. It takes bravery, man. And that's what this Manchester City side have got. So um, I'm delighted. It did start relatively calmly. This game, uh, City could have come behind with a little bit of sloppy defending. But then your man Raheem Sterling did what Raheem Sterling did. Wonderful movement for that first goal. Uh, I've done a little bit of prop on Twitter a few minutes ago about Sterling. Uh, honestly, I think people don't give him the credit that he deserves. Watch that first goal again. Go and watch it back online and watch Sterling's movement as Cancelo, the ball nears Cancelo. He suddenly just flicks back like that and runs to the back post. He does that and he essentially tells Cancelo where to put it. His movement is so intelligent that he guides Cancelo's next instinct and gets himself in a, a position to put it in the back of the net there. That stuff... Like people just call it, um, they just call it a tapping. It's not even fair because the intelligence and the movement involved in that kind of stuff is absolutely huge, man. It really, really, really is. And this is why he gets those tappings because his positioning is the highest of the highest level. I know he can be frustrating, but I tell you what, none of our other wingers get on the end of that. They just don't because they don't make those movements. And most forwards don't make those movements. That is a striker's instinct there. So you've got to give him his credit for that. He'd earned it. I really did earn it. Kevin De Bruyne I thought was excellent. <laughs> I don't know how he didn't get more assists today. He was he was bullishly brilliant. Bulldozing through the middle of the pitch. That's Kevin De Bruyne resonant. Absolutely fantastic. And I was delighted as well for Jack Grealish. Oh man, I love Jack Grealish. I genuinely do. I think he's just yeah. He's special, man. I think he's a special footballer. And you have to give him time. You have to give him patience. In that last half an hour in particular, he was just... Well, do you know what? If we win the goal, the league on goal difference, Grealish has got a lot to do with that because he made those two extra goals towards the end, man. And he was flying uh, past his fullback, uh, creating stuff. Beautiful one-two uh, with Phil Foden. And then the composure, of course, as well, to pick out Sterling at the end. And he obviously made Foden's goal as well with that beating the fullback, cutting it back to Zinchenko. I think it was who had the shot. Or was it De Bruyne? I can't remember, which led, of course, uh, to Foden putting it in. Grealish is such an intelligent footballer. Give him time, and he will absolutely adapt to this team. He was really good, and I'm delighted for him. Elsewhere, I thought Rodri was immense again. Another set-piece goal from Manchester City. We are fucking big. We are strong, and we are very good at set-pieces. Imagine, imagine if you had... Uh, a six foot four strikers this as well. The City are going to be very, very hard. I swear scoring goals and set pieces is just having a pretty good corner taker and then loads of big, beautiful bastards. And guess what Manchester City have? We have that and we're about to get another potentially. So this is what makes us so scary in the set pieces, man. Rodri, I fucking love Rodri. He's just so, so, so good. He's brilliant. Uh, elsewhere on the pitch, uh, it's a shame to see Diaz go off. Let's talk about injuries. Guardiola's confirmed, and I hate saying this, no Walker. No stones and no Diaz until the end of the season. I know that's only two weeks from now, um, but that is absolutely a blow. We cannot we cannot deny that. Unfortunately, it's genuinely um, a massive, massive, massive blow from Manchester City. Um, hopefully, we've got enough. I mean, we're looking at a defensive potentially of Cancelo. Right, we might see if Aki is available. It'll be him and Laporte, of course. It might be Fernandinho there. It'll be Zinchenko at left back, which does lead me on to Zinchenko quite nicely. He was really, really good. We need to talk about Zinchenko. We need to have a conversation about how good a left-back he is. <laughs> he was fucking great today. Even going forward, he was creating loads of chances. He was brilliant. He was a complete fullback today. Incredible, incredible... Um on the ball, super composed, excellent technically, and of course getting forward and really, really organised and strong. Zinchenko is just a really, really, really good footballer. Um, and he's gone past the point now where I don't, like, look, we just need to take him mega seriously. Like, he's more than good enough, absolutely more than good enough. Uh, City Matter says, I can't wait to see Harlan join the Foden Greenish Bromance. Matt, Matt, oh, just imagine, mate, absolutely imagine just how good that will feel. It'll be wonderful. I'm drinking my tea because that's how good it'll be. I think you'll get on really well with them if he joins, man. I think Harlan will love Foden and I think you'll love Grealish and I think you'll love De Bruyne and it'll, it'll be great. Yeah and, yeah, and as Alex Johnson said, it was really nice to see Zinchenko smiling and buzzing for him. Uh, it was just a good performance full stop today. Genuinely a really good performance from Manchester City and it was needed. Like Liverpool, they will feel an edge. They will feel an edge, won't they? Because it was just... Like when City are this good and that confident going forward, look, we've got three games left now. We've got West Ham, we've got Wolves, and we've got Aston Villa. Liverpool play Aston Villa on Tuesday, I think it is. A tired Liverpool, uh, obviously reeling from going three points behind in their race to quadruple. Klopp was really, really 
salty last night as well. So you got to consider the fact that they'll be a little bit down. Aston Villa could get something there, man. They could get something there. Legan saying, oh, the super chat says, I don't think Ake and Laporte will play together. I think Pep will want the right left foot balance of Fidinho and one of them. Maybe, mate. I think you're possibly right, but I also think he might just go for the two centre-backs that have got more experience there. Uh, I can't imagine you wanting to play Fernandinho against West Ham and Michele Antonio, for example. It just doesn't seem that logical to me. You might be right, of course, man, but I feel like he also might just fancy the people who actually know how to do the role and not take any chances. Because Ake's been brilliant recently. Look at Ake against, um, Ake against uh, Atletico, for example. You might be right, uh, Legand. Thank you for the super chat, man. But we'll see. Either way, Ferner, I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we should more than have enough. It's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I can't wait for next season. I genuinely can't wait for next season because I think Greenish will kick on again. I think Sterling, if he stays, will absolutely love playing with Haaland, the space that he will create for him. Uh, Sterling on the right, by the way, is a different beast, doesn't he? He beats his man like that. Obviously, occasionally he runs into the odd blind alley, but that's fine, man. I don't mind. The point is, he keeps running at people. He keeps creating chances. He keeps creating, creating chaos. Sterling is the kind of guy that absolutely creates chaos, and I love that, man. Genuinely love it. Can you imagine how many assists uh, Wiz pointed out that De Bruyne will get, was robbed so many assists? Um, imagine how many he'll get with Haaland around, man. It'll be absolutely ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah, it'll be stupid. It'll be stupid with Haaland around. Like He put so many on a sixpence today that he did not... Did not get um, his just rewards for because City were wasteful in front of goal, always. But this is a massive result, man. This is a massive result. Don't get me wrong. Liverpool will absolutely be devastated by this. They really will be. Um, uh, good to see you. Wilson Esmeralda play. Maybe he will at some point, Dylan. Maybe he will be. Uh, can you imagine the scenes of Gerard's Villa take points to Liverpool? The few will be incredible, says City. Matt. I'll ma imagine, mate. And I, I don't know why. It feels like something Gerard will do would accidentally mess up Liverpool's title challenge again. It feels like... I don't know why. He's got a history of doing that, of course. Um, I was really happy to see Egan Riley get on as well. CJ Egan Riley is clearly a guy that Guardiola kind of sort of trusts. Obviously, you know, he's not going to start a game anytime soon. But as Guardiola said recently that Egan Riley is just super reliable and super solid to everything. And I think that's something Guardiola tweet, uh, not tweet I just read the word tweet, uh, appreciates. It was a bit as well when he got his little touch where he came on and he muscled off the forward and played a nice pass down to Sterling on the wing, which was just really good, man. A Premier League debut for hopefully again going to be the Premier League champions and we are staring down four uh, out of five now I mean that's a fucking great season I'm sorry look it is a shame that we went out of the Champions League it's a shame that we didn't win the Carabao or the FA Cup this season but you cannot absolutely underestimate what it will mean if we win this league title and let's look at Guardiola's quotes as well by the way I'm going to find Guardiola's quotes because he was on he was <laughs> he was absolutely leaning into leaning into um the Burting today, and I bloody love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, <laughs> I let me find him. I'm going to just find what he said. He's just... He just turned into a Man City fan. Man, I love it. I'll find the quote. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it on screen right now. Uh, where it is? It said, in the last 12 years, Man City are, are there winning uh, titles and challenging. I know sometimes you're uncomfortable for fans, but I don't care. If people want more for Liverpool, then it's not an issue. Liverpool has an incredible history in Europe, in competitions, but not in the Premier League because they've won one in 30 years. It's amazing. And he went on to say, everyone in this country supports Liverpool, the media and everyone. Our destiny's in our hands. This is important. <laughs> Pep's gone full on Manchester City fan with this man. He's absolutely loving it. And I really love that like, uh, Pep's getting this kind of agitated by it all because essentially what this means, he's becoming more of us. He's becoming more of one of us. He absolutely hates Liverpool right now. He hates the fact that no one gives a shit about Man City. Um, or not in terms of like... No one wants us to win. He hates that. He hates it, but he also loves the fact that it's a, a way to revel in this kind of hatred of us as a club. And I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Um, Ibrahim asking me what I thought of Grealish. If you just joined, mate, uh, I thought Grealish was excellent. I think Grealish is going to go to the very top. I really do believe that. I think he needs a bit of time, a bit of patience, and he'll be very, very, very good next season. I think he'll settle. I think he'll feel a lot more at home. Um, and hopefully he gets his first Premier League title medal and he won't feel like an imposter anymore. I sometimes get the feeling that Grealish is still very much in for all um, and in awe of his teammates, man. Like, he believes that he doesn't quite belong there. I get that feeling sometimes because he's a lot more humble than people give him credit for, honestly. He's a little, he's a really nice down-to-work guy and I think sometimes he turns up and he tries to play the character of 
good Guardiola attacker where I think he doesn't realise that he can do all that stuff but also just express himself and go for it a little bit. And I think once he's settled in and he knows the Guardiola's fundamentals, which I think he will by next season, he'll start to feel like he belongs a little bit. He won't feel like he doesn't belong, you know, like he's just a guy trying to impress. I think, honestly, he'll be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I love it. Um, I think he'll be fantastic next season. And I thought today was one of his best games in a City shirt. Uh, he was mesmeric going forward. And that turn of pace that he's got, you cannot ignore that on the counter, man. I can't wait to see him eventually playing through the middle as well because I think that's what he's got going for him, of course. Um, I was reading a quote uh, from Rodri about Champions League exit. He said, in my case, I didn't sleep, but you have to deal with this. Football is like this. Football has been unfair was in Europe, but we're going to try again next season. It's like when you put coins in a machine, one day you're going to earn. I like that. I absolutely like that, Rodri. And he's right. He's right. I think eventually Man City will get there. And I believe that. I don't think that's illogical. I think Man City have shown that they can get to the latter stages, the final, the semi-finals, be, be two minutes away from the final again. I do believe it's a matter of time. I do believe it's a matter of time. I don't know when it'll be. It might be five years, 10 years, 15 years. But I do think at some point it's going to happen because I think City are just built, being built to win it eventually. Um, KDB was indeed class, Sean. Uh, Dylan saying, what do you think of the rumour of Bernardo and De Jong swap? I don't want Bernardo to go anywhere, man. De Jong was a fantastic player. So I'd be very happy if he came in. But I do not want Bernardo to go anywhere. I mean, he was sort of softened the blow a little bit because De Jong's fantastic. But we need, we need... We need the energy of Bernardo in the Premier League. It's vital. And Pete's saying we're not signing Pogba. He's not a pep type player, so forget about Pogba. It's just the media having something to write about. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know fully. City did try and sign Pogba for Guardiola when he first came. That's a true story. Um, but maybe not. Maybe not. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but either way, I don't think he's going to come either. My initial reaction was that I think it's, it's unlikely. Uh, and I still feel like it is unlikely. So we'll have to see on that one. Either way, it'll be really funny. I mean, I don't think we have to worry about it too much. But today, City were, were excellent. Like, they were excellent. Um, and I'm very happy about that. I mean, it could have been really easy to struggle today. It could have been really easy to have a bad day. It could have been really easy to concede an early goal and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this City side... You know, they picked themselves up, they dusted themselves off, and they spanked Newcastle. They did. And Newcastle side that man, uh, that Liverpool only beat 1 0 and struggled to get a pass. You know, City were fantastic. And you've got to admire them, man. You've got to admire the balls of this City side sometimes. What kind of tea is this? It's just your classic English breakfast tea, mate. Um, you're in black tea. I love it. It's good stuff. Milk, sugar, that'll do me. Um, I'm very disappointed about the Diaz injury, uh, as you're Dave Singh. Really disappointed. Um, and no, Sean, I wouldn't play any kids against Wolves. I don't think you'd do that. I think it's a bit naive, to be honest. You're not going to play any guys who've not played in the Premier League before in a game of this stature. You play Fandino. You play Ake or Laporte. You play Rodri there. But they are the backups to the backups to the backups. But we don't. I don't think we should play a kid there. I think for what it's worth, I think Egan Riley's ahead of him better in Guardiola's eyes. I think Egan Riley is seen as the steady... Um, I feel like he's a steady Eddie, basically. And Guardiola would trust him a little bit more. But no, I don't think we will. Um... He's just a little bit too young, too wet behind the ears. <laughs> Dan saying towards a mug for Scouse tears. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm drinking uh, Jorgen Klopp's tears, you know, his frustration. And it's quite funny looking online and seeing so, so many Liverpool fans replying to my tweets about City being good today. And like, so many kids obviously getting salty, but lads, you're having an incredible season. The quadruple. You still might do it, but it was always going to be incredibly, incredibly hard. And we've been there before, City fans. We know what it's like to get giddy with these things. Just relax, man. You've already won one trophy. You're probably going to win a couple more. You might even win three more. Who knows? Fucking take it easy. Um, so I was happy with that today. I was really happy. Uh, I did record a vlog. I've um, not done a vlog for ages, so it'll be very, very ropey. I went down with, with the wife. Our baby um, in Nicholas, Nicholas' belly was at his first ever game today. Um it's his first ever game, you know, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, it went very well, it's actually the spoiler. Um, I feel like our baby was a good luck charm today, genuinely was. Uh, and it was wiggling about as well, kicking about, which is obviously a good sign as well. So that was all very sweet and very, very wholesome. Nicola's knackered now, though, because it took a long time to get back today. Um, public transport from the Etihad to Ramsbottom is just, it's just slow. It's slow. Um, we're getting very better at scoring from set pieces, Sean. It's something that we've unlocked at the City, of course, and we're just... We're fucking good at it. We're really good. It's simple. Good cross, big bastards, you'll score goals. And City have got a lot of very tall players these days. Rodri's really good in the air, of course. Um, Diaz, Laporte, of course, trouble, you know. Um, and of course, if we get Haaland, it'll be very different. Do I think Egan Riley will become a regular? I don't, if I'm being honest. I think Egan Riley's a good player, but I don't think he's going to become a regular at Man City. I think he's 
just like I think he's a, he's like a solid at everything, but not exceptional at everything. I think Guardiola even said that himself. But I think right now he probably really enjoy being involved in his first team and around it. And fair play to him, man. And um, I don't think he'll quite make it in Man City because I think we probably got better young prospects. But um, yeah, if he had like loads of pace or he was an incredible passer or something like that, then I think mate, you might have a chance. But I, I think he's a good passer. I think he's got a decent pace, and I feel like he's lacking an attribute. But it doesn't mean he's not great. Um, he's a really good young prospect and do you know what fucking prove me wrong man like CJ O'Reilly he deserves these opportunities and I'm really happy for him but my gut instinct is saying he might just end up out on loan instead um, what's my intro music called it's uh, Falls it's a band called Falls it's called Birch Tree it's a song I really like by Falls uh, it's a really good song but guys thank you very much for watching this City at the Top of the League I'm going to get finished with Brew I'm going to start editing my vlog as well it'll be live probably tomorrow morning realistically uh, I'm buzzing I'm tired but City at the Top of the League it's very 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 good news three points clear Liverpool are they're anxious right now it looks like the quadruple could uh, take in a massive beating and that's very good news for me Come on, City. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and I'll catch you in a bit. Big love to Matt, I'm the latest member, of course, and all the, all the people who've done the uh, Super Chats as well. Thank you so, so much. In a bit, come on, City.